Come back after the break. We already talked about the, we started our discussion, the other session on the oral forms of your, I mean, your jam exams, use of English. And I want us to still, you know, remember some things about it. For instance, we said earlier on that you have 44 sound system in English and 20 of them are vowels and 24 are consonants. Now we said vowels are grouped into two, you have monothongs and there are 12, and then you have diphthongs. There are eight. We're going to look at them you know, later on in the course of our discussions. And then we said we have 24 consonants and consonants are grouped according to place of articulation and manner of articulation. In terms of manner of articulation, you have plosive or stop consonants. You also have fricatives, you have affricatives, you have lateral, you have approximate, and all of that. And there, we said your exams, we also cover you know, something on rhymes and homonyms. We talked about that. We also talked about word strays and emphatic strays. And I mentioned to you that for monosyllabic words, words that contain just one syllable, stress is not a problem because the stress, the primary stress falls on the only one syllable of the word. That's why it's monosyllabic. But then you start having some issues where you have bisyllabic words, polysyllabic words. You know, when it comes to polysyllabic words, your problem multiplies. Then for bisyllabic words, of course, if it is a noun or an adjective, you know that the primary stress is automatic in a lot of cases on the first syllable. And then when it is a verb or a preposition, the primary stress falls on the second syllable of the word. That is for bisyllabic words. So you don't have much issues at the level of bisyllabic words. But then at the level of polysyllabic words, that is from three syllables and above, you're going to have a lot of issues, especially for non-native speakers, for second language users, because you're wondering which syllable to stress. So we are going to look at some of these issues in detail in the course of our discussion. So in this unit, the unit of oral forms, where your knowledge of the, uh, the spoken form of language is tested, you're going to have some of these essential topics that we are going to discuss in the course of the lesson. And I want us to start with vowels. And this time around, I want us to start with short vowels. They are part of what is called monothongs. Of course, we can't treat all the vowels in this particular setting. Number one, it will create a kind of confusion. Another thing is that time is not, time, you know, for time factor, we may not be able to treat them, but I want to pick some of them that are of significant importance as far as these exams is concerned. So I want us to look at short vowels, start with short vowels. They are short because, we call them short vowels because they are short. That's just the truth. They are not as long as the long vowels. So. In this case, I want us to look at uh, seven of them here, the short pure vowels. I want us to, to look at um, the first one, which is the short E sound. This one, the short E, we call it E. We articulate it as E. And it's realized in words like bit, pit, and other ones. Then the second one that I want us to look at is uh, the short A sound, this particular one. The short A sound, we call it A. For instance, you have 
pet, bag, peg, and other examples. Another one that I want us to look at is the short ah sound. It's articulated as ah, ah. For instance, you have pat, you have bad, you have cat, you have language, you have land, you have hand. All these are examples of this particular sound, the short ah sound. Then you have ah, this particular one, ah. For instance, you have caught, you have bought, when you want to use the strong form, and when it is in isolation, B-U-T, but, you understand, and other examples. Another one that I want us to look at is U, which is a short one, the short U sound. For instance, you have put, and uh, you have other examples as well. Then we look at the short O sound, O, O, it's articulated O, and we look at it in words like dog and the rest of them. Then another one that I want us to look at is E, E. Now this particular sound is called the banana vowel. The banana vowel is what we can also call the schwa sound. Now, it is the most used sound in English language because it is a weak vowel. And since it is a weak vowel, it appears regularly in our spoken English. For instance, we call it a, ah, but then if it appears at the end of a word, sometimes it is loud. And we articulate it as a. Ah. For instance, you have teacher, it's a bit loud, but then where this sound is realized, that particular syllable is not stressed, and that is why it is never loud. For instance, you have about, about, about. You can almost not even hear the particular syllable that the vowel occurs. So you will be tested in some of these areas. They can decide to give you a question on any of the short vowels. So having looked at the short vowels, I want us to look at the long vowels. We are still talking about the monotons, pure vowels. For instance, the first one is almost the same thing with the the short vowels we talked about. The only difference between the long vowels and the short vowels is that the long vowels are more like times two of the short vowel. So instead of U, you now have U. Okay, the first one is U. Then the second one is A. This is E. And then you have E and O. So you have U as this. You have A as this. You have E as this. You have E as this. And then you have O as this. Now, when it comes to sounds, the arrangement of letters does not really, really matter because you don't pronounce based on how letters are arranged. Somehow, when we're talking, when, during the time you were learning phonics in, you know, maybe in your primary school, they talked about how you can combine letters to arrive at the pronunciation of words. But as you advanced, you will discover that it's no longer tenable. It's not always all the same, all the time. Because sometimes the letters, the letter combination can be misleading. So you rely heavily on conventionality, how the words is usually pronounced right from time. I think that's how it works. So if you look at the first sound that you have here, ooh, 
you will discover that a lot of letters can be used to, you know, where the sound can be realized. For example, you have letter U in wood or rule. Do you understand? Or crude. And then in some cases you have a double O in spellings. For instance, in pool, P O O L. You can also have it sometimes in words like stood. Do you understand? S T O O D may be understood as well. Do you understand? But then what you will have to also understand is that it is not in every word where you can have double O that the long O sound is realized. For instance, cook, C-O-O-K. It is not this sound that is realized, it's the short one. Look, look, L-O-O-K. It is not the sound that is realized there. So you have to be very, very careful. And therefore, the long A sound, A. Sometimes you have letter A alone. Sometimes you have A, R. And then a lot of other ones. For instance, you have past, last, and the rest of that. You can also have father. You know, it's far from here. And then the other one is father. It's a long, I mean, a sound. And then you have father. You know, your biological male parent. You call him father. Then the letter that is realized there is a long a sound, but then you have letter A. Okay? Then coming to the long E sound, you have E. And then our word here is key. Q-U-A-Y. It is not pronounced as quay, or maybe the way you want to attempt it. It's key. It has the same pronunciation with K-E-Y. Key, the one you use to open the door with. You understand? So it's not by, it's not all about spellings. Sometimes you have I-E, for instance, peace, where you have P I E C E, peace. Sometimes you have E I in the word receive, receive. So, all these things you have to take into cognizance. And then the long uh, A sound, it can appear in letters where you have I R, for instance, stare, shirt, skirt. It can also appear sometimes where you have E R. For instance, you have merge, M-E-R-G-E, -E, merge. And then sometimes it can also appear where you have U-R. For instance, disturb or purse, the purse that women carry around when they put some items there like jewelry and all of that. You understand? And then you have the last sound that I want us to consider here the long O sound, this one, it's articulated as O. It's longer than the short O sound. And then it is found in words like pause. You understand? Sometimes you have the spelling O-R. For instance, you have porge. P-O-R-G-E. Porge. So all these things you have to take note of. So having talked about some of these um, long vowels, I want us to proceed, and this time around, I want us to look at some consonants. Remember, I'm just picking some of the sounds that you have them regularly coming up. Your knowledge of them will be tested on, I believe. They are the ones that I want to pick and then we we'll look at here. So for consonants, they are not really, really tough because a lot of time, they go with letters. For instance, if you have the word take, T, 
T-A-K-E. And on the line letter T, definitely the sound that is realized there is T sound. They understand. And the symbol looks like T as well. So for consonants, except in some situations, they are really, really simple. And that's why we don't really pay so much attention on them. But at the end of the day, I will give you some materials that will guide you in studying all the English sounds, including um, stress or intonation and all of that. So let's see some of these key consonant sounds that you might be tested in, likely. So let's see, number one, I want us to look at the first one, which is G. It's articulated as G. Now, it is a sound that is realized twice in the word judge. Letter J captures the sound, and the letters D, G, E also capture the sound. That's why you have judge, okay? Then another one that I want us to look at is ch sound, okay? They are, they are called affricatives. G and ch are called affricatives because they combine both the features of plosive and stops consonants. So this is articulated as ch. So the sound is realized in the word church, the beginning and the end, the first two letters and the last two letters of the word church, you know, contain the sound, ch. Okay, there, this one is brought up because a lot of students mix it up. They thought this is j, but this sound is yi, yi, yi. And it is a sound that is realized in the word yes. It is also realized between letter u and T in the, I mean, sorry, letter U and N in the word unity. In unity, you have the sound Y in between U and N. Is that clear? So another one is T. T is not really problematic as such, but then it can be, you know, quite tricky in certain words combinations. For instance, you have packed. The ED underlined in the word packed is t sound. Why is it t? Because it is preceded by a, um, a voiceless consonant. So when the suffix ed is attached to a particular word and it is preceded by a consonant sound, you're going to have t sound. That is why it is articulated or the word is pronounced as packed. Okay, now I want us to look at D. D, of course, in letters where you, you have, uh, in words where you have letter D, in the position where letter D is represented in a word, you are likely going to have D sound, D, this particular one. You're going to have it. For example, you have doctor. The D in the word doctor, the sound D is realized there. And then D is also realized in the suffix ED, especially when the ED is preceded by a voiced consonant. For example, you have planned, planned, okay? The ED in planned is, you know, uh, is placed after uh, a voiced consonant, mm sound. And that is why it is not plant, but planned. D, d. Are we together? It's different from packed, planned. D. So you have to take note of all these ones. Then another sound is, okay, just um, you have two, voiced and voiceless. The other one is, why? This particular one is only few people, just a particular tribe in Nigeria that has the problem of mixing and but we'll not go into that because we are not looking at social linguistics. It's just uh, something that will guide you for your exams. So, is a sound, it's articulated as 
And it can be found in a situation whereby you have letters PH. For instance, you have phone, telephone, and all of that. It can also be found where you have letter F. For instance, you have first, family, fast, and other examples. So I want us to look at these two particular sounds where you have TH, letters TH, and then what can be realized. Because in a situation whereby you have letters TH, you, you are likely going to have maybe three sounds. For instance, you're going to have the voiceless and the voice v. one. This particular one is voiceless, and that's why it's. V. Then this one is voiced, that's why it's articulated as. V. So you have v and you have. V. Okay? Okay? V. All right, so for instance, you have thanks. You understand? Thanks, thought. And then you have though, that, them. You understand? So all of these work together. But then there are some words where you have letters TH, yet none of these will be realized, either this or that. For instance, you have T-H-Y-N-E. It's articulated or it's, it's pronounced as time. You have T H O M A S. It's pronounced Thomas. So you have to take note of these things. These are some of the exceptions that you will have to take note of. So we have discussed so much on vowels and consonants. So let's look at some few diphthongs. Of course, uh, when you're talking about diphthongs, these diphthongs occur when you have two symbols representing only one sound. You have two symbols that represent one sound, and then there is a glide from the first symbol to the other one. And in this case, I want us to pick some of them and look at them. For instance, the first one is this. It's articulated as ew, ew. It's a schwa and you. So you have ew, ew. For instance, you have open, the word open. Letter O is realized, letter O contains the sound. That's what I meant. So ew, open. Then you can also have a word like phone, P-H-O-N-E, phone. You understand? So, it's articulated as ew, open, fill. Then, another uh, diphthong that I want us to look at is ow. Ow, this particular one, ow. And it's realized in words like now, do it now, brown, sound. You understand? They are all part of it. Then, let's look at this one, a. A, for instance, you have say, betray, you understand, made, and other examples. Then, I want us to look at this, I, it is articulated I, you start with A, and then you end with E, that's why it glides from one uh, symbol or sound to another. So you have I, then examples is, tie, try, and the rest of them. Then you have oi. This is a symbol from the short o sound to the short e sound, but then it's pronounced at the same thing. Oi, oi. So you have recoil, boy, troy, and other examples. Then you have ear, ear. For instance, you have deer. You have dear, D-E-E-R, as well. Then you have air, 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 air. So it's a glide, glides from one to another. So air, for instance, you have bear, you have share, share. 
S H A R E. They are all contained. So I want you to take note of this. It is not in every word where you're going to have E A R that you are going to have uh, ear or air. They can be. Sometimes in some words you have E A R and you are going to realize this. For instance, you have ear, your two ears. And then sometimes you're going to have this, air. For instance, you have bear. You understand? All these things are important and you, you don't have to mix them up. Then the last diphthong that I want us to look at is ur. For instance, you have sure, you have pure, and all of that. So we have done so much on the consonants and vowels. So let's look at stress. But then, before we move into stress, I want us to have a break. Thank you.